I got to ask, don't be offended, but you know, you think of iconic roles and people get stuck in them and you got to not reinvent yourself, but you got to somehow get out of it. You know, you think of Seinfeld, like all these George, Kramer, Elaine, how, how what, what was your process of it, of getting out of it and altering into something else? Uh, and how did you maneuver it in your head? I, uh, after John Vision, I turned 30 and moved to LA. Wow. Um, it was sort of self-imposed exile, partially to answer the what if question, like what would happen if I went there? And I found out, um, it's nicer than I thought, made friends for life. All the cliches that you assume will be there are there, like the wide-eyed actresses and the sleazy agents. Those people are all there. <laughs> but I didn't expect to find my people there. I met people that were ambitious and curious and adventurous and creative and funny. Like, mm -hmm. those people are there, too. Makes sense. It's the kind of mecca for my business. But the thing that you can't do there, I discovered, is be a spork. You have to be one thing. I'm a leading man a Hallmark movie guy. I am a dramatic cop show lead. I'm a sitcom wacky neighbor. In Canada, I can be all those things. Like I, I hosted a talk show as myself, but there were sketches in which I played characters. People in Canada were like, oh, okay, he's J-Rock now. And okay, J-Rock is the guy on Mr. D now. Yep. Um, you can kind of be a bunch of different things because you have to be. I, like... It's funny. People will sometimes say like, man, go, uh, I'll be Noah Dick and letter Kennedy and people will write, eh, go back to the boys. I can't. If I'd relied on being a 50 year old man in a do rag to feed my family, <laughs> my life would be much different right now. Um, so I think leaving at the right time has been the thing that's allowed me to have a career versus a role. Did you have advice from someone else when you made these decisions or did you just... Always kind of instinctive. Instincts? Like could kind of feel like when it was played out or... Uh, yeah. I mean, in the case of J-Rock, like I said, we, I had a kid. I, I had a wife. I didn't know what else you could do. You just can't go back to, you know what I'm saying, Randy, inflatable Elvis shit. Because <laughs> it kind of gets played out. But <laughs> as a result, it sort of made it mythical. It might be overstating it. But it's something that people look in the rearview mirror fondly at right i i don't want to be touring as j-rock right now i love it i, I yeah i, I yeah. think to, if no you go ahead go ahead well no it just, it just seems like it's it's a thought out career path it just seems like you, you've, you've you've sat down and kind of thought about the next step before you made it i, I, I if you know something's going to be played out okay well and, and uh not to suggest for a moment that Every morning there are 10 offers on the table and I have the luxury of sifting through them and choosing. You often don't. You often have to, especially in this part of the country, there's a proud tradition of crossing your arms and saying, man, it must be nice. You know, people from Toronto get everything or they have more shows or whatever. You have to generate your own stuff here, as you guys know better than anybody. Um, so all the must be nice energy, I've just converted into what's next energy. Um, so I have had to, and wanted to kind of diversify what I do. We have trailers that we rent to movies and TV shows. That's something that happens whether I'm working or not. Oh, cool. Like if I'd been relying on my gorgiosity during the pandemic, we would be starving. <laughs> um, so my father-in-law always says, uh, you know how you do 10 things kind of half ass? Why don't you pick three and do them properly? Full out. Yeah. Great point. So I've tried to pick a few things, like some for love, some for money, some for both, but that if the phone stops ringing as an actor, we'll be okay. <laughs>